Hello and welcome to Let's Play Slay. I'm Gryrock, and if you've never played this game before, I have to recommend it highly. This is one of the most fun games I've ever played on any mobile device. In fact, I even started playing it back uh, on Palm OS. Oh geez, had to be nearly 11, 12 years ago now. But it still holds up today, it's a lot of fun. It's a strategy game, turn-based, and uh, basically the con concept is you are vying for territory of these islands. And so you have a variety of different islands to choose from, starting with your letter A's, which are very easy, moving all the way up to your C's, easy, F's hard, H is very hard, all the way up to R's. So we're going to do, since this is the first time we've ever done one, we're going to do one of these nice easy ones. We'll go ahead and start with Haku. So the island is going to be the exact same every single time, but it starts out looking fairly random. You play as a light green team. And as I say, your objective is to gain full territory control of the entire island and kill everybody else. So what you can do is recruit units, starting with your peasants here. And when you grab those units, you'll be able to place them on territory around your current territory. So in this case, I'm going to place on this lower right dark green tile there. Once you've placed all your units, that's the end of your turn, and then the enemy has a turn. In this case, that territory has no place where they can put a man. Peasants are not strong enough to attack the villages. All those little huts are villages. So I'm just going to go around and strategically place my units that I am able to place. And when I am done placing units, my turn will be concluded. You hit the end turn button. And the other units move. So now you can see all of our enemy has placed their units. So I will continue to go around to see where my enemy, or my units can be placed. These guys have nowhere to go. When you do pick up a unit, the tiles that it can move to are highlighted in red. And one of the best strategies in this game is to make your territories as large as possible so you get as much resources. The interesting thing, and a completely unrealistic thing about these armies, is that as long as you control their entire territory, you can move those units anywhere within your territory instantly. Move to the next turn. So you always want to be on the lookout for what your major territory is going to be and what areas of the island you want to have territorial control over. So my first strategy I think is going to be to take these units in this territory here and keep them pretty well controlling the southwestern area of the island. You can see that this light brown unit has acquired a spearman and he has destroyed my territory there. Let's also see that this territory here still oh now he's got some place he can place. So he's gonna go right there. Now by doing that you'll see this medium green tile here, the one that has a spearman in the bottom and two peasants at the top is now split. I'm actually going to split it again. This spearman now is not going to have enough resources to survive, so when I end this turn he's going to be dead. And that way a peasant can destroy a spearman. Looking at this territory now, I have enough that I can get a spearman. By combining two peasants, you create a spearman. The spearman was able to destroy that other peasant, and now we have a larger territory fairly well defended. Continuing to move forward, gain more territory in the west, and we'll end that turn. Now you want to make sure that the territory they have is well defended, because just like what I did with that brown unit over here, you can do the same, enemy units can do the same to you by splitting your territory in half. Now I'm going to combine these two territories here, Actually, I'm going to put a castle in right over here. The spearman is not able to destroy the castle. You need the next unit up to destroy the castle. And move to the next turn. And so what I haven't explained to you just yet is the way that the resources work. You'll see in the upper right-hand corner two numbers. The green number, plus seven, 
That's how many new resources you get at the end of each turn. 12 is the current number of resources you actually have. So it costs 10 units to create a peasant. The green number is affected by how many territorial tiles you have in that territory and how many units, uh, army units, you currently have in that territory. So a big territory with a little army is going to have much more resources at the beginning of each turn. Smaller territory with a large army is going to have much fewer. Strategically placing my units around the map. Trying to make sure that I'm gaining territory without overextending myself too much. And it looks like this territory here finally has a unit in it. But I have no place to put them. So moving to the next turn. I'm going to continue to try to unite. I have now united almost all of my territories together. And it's a little dangerous here in the middle. Not very well defended. I'm going to continue to try to acquire the southwestern territories. Any place along water is very strategically advantageous. Because any place along water cannot be attacked. And now you see where these crosses are here. That means that yellow territory did not have enough resources to fund their army. And they were destroyed. I'm going to try and do that to these guys here as well. So you always got to keep an eye on your resources. If your territory is split and you don't have enough resources to cover your army, your army will die. Now this is actually a rather easy game on these easy difficulty settings. It's fairly relaxing actually. But when you get into the more difficult maps, it can be quite a strategic conundrum to win some of them. I'm sure we'll get into those in a later game. Or excuse me, later episode. You can also see down here we have trees encroaching on our territory, and the trees, you do not get any resources for any tiles that have trees. Now the ultimate goal here, like I say, is to gain territory of the entire island. You don't actually have to go through that entire step, you just need to make your army so big and insurmountable that the other players will surrender. Now, if it wasn't abundantly clear by this, these two guys jumping up right and down here are peasants. Now they can, when you pick them up, you see there's not many tiles in the north that they can go to. Plenty of tiles here in the south where they can be placed, but that's about it. However, when you combine two peasants together, that creates a spearman. And spearmen can attack villages, huts, and other peasants. So you need spearmen to take over the enemy territories. Now eventually you'll see that if you take three peasants, or one spearman and one peasant, combine them together, you get knights. Knights can take over castles. And there is one unit above the knights, and that's the baron. And barons can attack knights. The resources needed for each advancing unit become exponentially larger. So it takes quite a bit of territory to be able to control a baron. Now the other players would like to surrender. Do I want to accept? Yes, I will accept. And I want in 11 turns. So you can see on these very easy maps, it doesn't take many turns to win. As you get a little harder to the easy maps, a few more turns. Moving into the hard, some of these can take up to 20, 25 turns to win. we got a lot of maps on here. Plenty more episodes to come. Thank you for joining us. Hope you come back.